Hello and welcome back to the show. So I am super excited to be joined here by my guest for today, Angelo Christian. Angelo is a real estate mortgage broker. He owns a company uh, and he is the CEO of Christian Financial. And it is a company that really does a lot in the lending industry, right? So anything that you can think about, whether if it's buying a residential home, FHA, commercial lending, hotels, multifamily, he does all of this and it's a really diversified company. So as you can imagine, Christian is somebody who has a lot of experience in this <laughs> space and he has had 15 years of experience. He's now one of the top, uh, top financial advisors here in the Houston area. And he started his journey all the way back before all of this success, uh, living in his car, being homeless. So I would love for him to be literally, able to, yeah. <laughs> I love for yeah. him to be able to share a little bit of that uh, today on the show and talk to us a little bit about how to become very successful, building a successful business, even coming from very humble beginnings. So, without further ado, I want to introduce my guest, Christian uh, or Angela. Welcome to the show. You can call, you can call me Chris. A lot of people do that, so it's all good, man. So. Uh, thank you. Yeah, for having me on, man. No, it's uh, it's definitely been a journey. Um, I've now been yeah, in the lending business for uh, nearly two decades. Um, and yeah, it literally started, you know, uh, we grew up very poor and uh, homeless, um, not because of we, we wanted to just because of uh, circumstances with my parents. And um, so it really is a real life bootstrap, uh, you know, situation that um, that really just attributed to hard work um extremely extremely hard work i mean i still work 80 plus hours a week today and um that's really the um the secret for me uh i didn't have a you know jeff bezos or elon musk uh type father or brain so um i had to you know get my butt out there and get to work so but yeah i mean um you know, still look back at that time, it was a very grim time for me uh, with my family. Um, you know, we didn't know what we we're going to do, how we we're going to survive. Um, and so at that time, I enrolled into and I had to drop out of school to take care of my family. I was working three jobs and because um, my father had left us. And so um, I dropped out in the sixth grade. Um, so my, I didn't really have a, a solid education. So I wanted to change my life. I wasn't happy. I was just, you know, working at restaurants and, you know, um, you know, really meager type jobs just to make ends meet. And um, so I enrolled back into uh, college to get my GED, uh, went back to school um, and really started to study success um, because I, f I found out like if some reading some of the books, some of my favorite books, like you know, Unlimited Power by Anthony Robbins, Think and Grow Rich, uh, studying Warren Buffett. How, how do people do it? Because obviously people have done it before and you study history. So I started to really get involved in reading a lot of books uh, on success, business, finance. Um, and, and those those people, even though I didn't know them personally, like Warren Buffett uh, or Arnold Schwarzenegger, I knew them virtually, you know, and, and by reading them, I felt that that connection with them that I could change my life. Cause I saw what they did. So I uh, went to school, went to school, got my education, um, you know, fell in love with finance, uh, love numbers, love math. Um, and then went to go work for a mortgage uh, bank, AmeriQuest mortgage in 2005 in the subprime uh, heyday in the subprime market and uh, studied their business model. Um, and basically from there um, after the, subprime implosion that company shut down i started my own brokerage and um really the rest is history now i mean we first started off doing subprime loans then we shifted into fha loans um and then really grew the company you know from 2007 till today when we first started we were just doing residential but like you stated we've morphed into you know hard money private lending commercial lending and we still do standard lending so we have three divisions which is very rare for a mortgage company. Most mortgage companies will just do one. Um, but because of the depth of my knowledge in doing this for so long um, and the resources that we have, we've been able to set up, you know, three different silos uh, in the market to be able to service, you know, pretty much all different types of clientele. So that's fast forward today, 2024. 
Um, you know, so the mortgage business is very, very dynamic real estate uh, in the market. And one of the things I always say is that you have to have, you know, in life, you know, a very solid lender in your pocket. Everybody always needs money. Capital is a multi-trillion dollar business. And we want to be your lender um, when you, when it comes to getting financing, whether it's you buying your house and you need a conventional mortgage or you want to build, you know, 200 units, we want to be your lender to make it happen. Right. Absolutely. So you have a very, uh, I say a very cool story of, you know, starting out somebody who I guess from the outside looking in, uh, didn't start out very successful, but, oh. you know, really kind of built it, you know, on your own back, if you will, this very successful business that you have today, right. um, that is actually very unusual, like you said, in the, you know, in the mortgage industry, right, where you guys are doing, you know, all kinds of different, <laughs> all kinds of different loans in, in your company. So, I'd love to dig a little bit deeper into kind of your journey into success. You mentioned you started out, uh, you know, reading a lot of books and finding all of these virtual mentors, if you will. So I guess what was kind of your inspiration to do that? And, you know, what are some of the top lessons that you learned there where, you know, it ended up changing your mindset from somebody who was kind of more or less broke to building a path yeah. of success? Yeah. And I, and I think that's a very important thing because I think everything ultimately stems from the mind. Uh, you know, whether you have a good life or a bad life, it's going to be, you know, what's going on inside your head. And um, so obviously, you know, there's no secret that in America, there's different classes of people, you know, there's different, um, you know, divisions of wealth. And us being poor, I was aware of that, you know, that there is different, I mean, you know, you, you, and you said you're in Sugar Land, I'm in Houston, you know, you go to River Oaks and you see people and you're like, well, how did, how did that guy get that house? How did that guy do that? Right. And I'm over here living in a little 400 square foot apartment. What, what did they do? You know, and then, so you start, and this is like really before the internet or cell phones and all this stuff. So um, really the only thing you had was the library of books. Um, and the internet was starting to just kind of come out. It was a kind of a thing. Um, but, you know, I wanted to find out, okay, how do the, you know, if other people have made an uh, enormous amount of success, obviously there's a pattern, there's a science to it. Um, obviously the, every industry is going to be different. Like we mentioned, you know, Amazon or, you know, Tesla, it's a different industry, but there's a pattern. So studying what those patterns were or what their, their thought process was to build a company like that and do those type of things. So, yeah, I mean, I you know, immerse myself um, in books. And I, well, some of my favorite books is, you know, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, uh, Change My Life Forever. I mean, obviously, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, um, you know, uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People. That's a solid one. Um, Unlimited Power and Tony Robbins, uh, you know, Change Mindset was a big driver for me. Uh, everything by Warren Buffett. I uh, love Warren Buffett. Great, amazing hero of mine. Uh, I've never met him personally, but he's definitely a, in my thoughts. And so the the lessons that I got from that is, yeah, I mean, you have to, I mean, there's many, many different lessons. I mean, obviously financially disciplined, um, you have to know your numbers. Um, you know, we talked about work ethic, extremely, you know, hard work. I mean, you, you know, you're not going to, in any company, it doesn't matter what it is, somebody's putting the work in, whether it's the team, you know, employees, managers, someone's having to do that work, whether it's Microsoft or, you know, Apple or just my little small little mortgage company. So, you, so you have to have hard work and you also have to be very organized. Uh, you have to be a great communicator. Um, you know, these are, these are really important, especially when you're managing people, you have to be able to delegate and communicate and inspire people. Uh, I like to use inspiration to lead people and not fear. Um, so there's, and then obviously consistency you know you just can't be good for one day it's a, it's a it's a journey of decades of hard work and so that consistency you know coming up and rising to the occasion coming to the plate every day to swing the bat um and being mentally prepared to do that right so and obviously that leads into taking care of your health if you're not healthy then you're not going to be able to you know exert that much energy to be have a successful business so those are some of the top things that i've learned along the way um, and then obviously, you know, building relationships, uh, solid networking with, with great people. I try to stay away from as much as I can from negative people. Uh, I don't want to be, I don't want any toxicity around me, you know? So, um, 
So, you know, networking and around people that are like-minded, I think is very important. Um, it helps to, you know, create a synergy and, um, you know, more ideas flow from that. So net, I think networking is very powerful, but in order to network, you have to have something to offer. No one's going to want to hang around you if you don't have any value, you know? So, uh, in a business setting, not in a friend setting, but in a business setting. So you have to, you know, get really good at what you're doing for people to attract people to want to be around you. Right. So those are some of my lessons that I've learned. Yeah. And those are really good lessons, right? Because like you mentioned earlier on, everything stems from how you think everything stems from your mind and uh, really what's up here. And you mentioned, um, you know, one of the, the more, more important things that we're able to kind of help you get to a place of success was surrounding yourself with, you know, successful people, right? Having the right network, having, being in the right environment. And, you know, you obviously started out in an environment where I guess it wasn't really conducive to success, right? right. Um, you know, not having that. Um, so how were you able to, I guess, change that? Were you, you know, did you put some type of framework in place in order to, um, you know, get rid of toxic people and negative people in your life and the negative environments and, you know, actively pursue being in, you know, being in proximity with positive and successful people? Well, yeah, I mean, so obviously, I think the the first thing is, you know, having that awareness of where I was at and where I wanted to be. So there was a gap, right? And if you're studying psychology and success, they those people did certain things to get there. Um, so I basically just modeled what, as, in my world, what I could of, you know, these people that I looked up to, like Arnold Schwarzenegger or, um, you know, Jeff, Jeff Bezos, you know, just in, in my own world, what I could do in my power. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, um, the other thing that I was at, at one time was I weighed 400 pounds. I was morbidly overweight, um, and had no structure or discipline with, uh, eating habits. So I was dealing with that at the same time when I was a kid, you know, and, um, trying to get out of, you know, poverty. So just cha a complete change of, of everything, change of scenery. I sure got, when I was a teenager, I hung around the wrong crowd. Uh, had to shake that off, make a change, you know, get rid of the the people that were bringing me down, um, change my diet. I started to exercise uh, daily, um, still walk today. I walk seven hours a day right now. So, um, so and at that time I was lifting weights. So yeah, getting into a regimen with, uh, you know, exercise uh, and then studying, learning, becoming a student, you know, and, and mastering my craft um, to become the best that I could. Right. So studying and learning, right? That's, I think, the more important thing for anybody who wants to become a success. And that is something that you did, right? Studying different people, getting, you know, not just your professional life in order, but also getting your personal life in order so that you can actually, you know, be be around and just have a, a good environment and, and that, right. you know, positive energy moving forward. So is that something that I guess like kind of stuck with you? as you were continuing in building your business um, mm -hmm. or did you kind of see it kind of fall off a little bit uh, as you were becoming more successful? No, no, I, it's, 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 I mean, I think if you, if you the whole thing is you got to develop the right habits, you know, habits will dictate your actions. And so and those habits for the most part have, have stayed with me. I haven't, I haven't really lost touch with uh, everything I've done. I, I mean, you know, I, I've, at that time, I had to um, create, change the habits of again eating, studying. I didn't like to read. I used to hate to read when I was a kid, uh, or even just anything with sitting down reading a book or you know, um, I, I despised it. Now, I mean, you know, I love learning. So just you know, those things have always stayed with me. Um, another thing that I think is also very important um, is you have to have time for yourself. So meditation or whatever you want to call it. Um, or reflecting, I think is extremely critical um, for any anybody's mental health and success and long-term stability is sometime, you know, ideally every day uh, for some type of self-awareness or reflection. Um, so that way you can resolve things in your mind. Yeah, absolutely. It's something that you want to stick with um, as you continue building your success as well. And, you know, taking the time, even if you're busy, like, you know, obviously you are taking the time to, you know, 
really build those, not just build those habits, but to maintain those habits. That's how you're going to maintain your success um, once you build it in the first place, right? Because we, I think we right. see a lot of people who, you know, they had good habits in the beginning when they were starting out, but as they started to build their success and build their business and, you know, more, more people were taking up their time and they have more obligations, they end up, you know, slowing down uh, on building those right. habits or straying away from that. And that's not, you know, that's not something that you want to do, right? No, no, I, I agree. I, I agree with you completely. I mean, um, it's, and it's tough. It's, I mean, I'll tell you, and then I, you know, I'm also married, I have three children. Uh, it's, um, and the thing is that you don't really know for sure. You can't forecast everything. Um, and you don't know when you get involved in something really what you've signed up for. And you know, so, and, and then because as, as time passes, more and more things come up, more opportunities, more challenges. And it's just, you just have to, you have to go with the flow and ride like a wave and just do your best to hold on and make it. Um, but no, I mean, it's, it's, um, and it's, it's a great journey. It's just, it's, it's definitely, it's, you have to, I think the biggest thing is you have to exert a lot of effort, um, a lot of energy to, you know, keep it all together. Right. Absolutely. So <clears throat> let's kind of shift gears a little bit here. And I want to talk a little bit more about kind of what you guys are doing, your business specifically, right. in lending. So you started out kind of in a, in a, in a time where I guess the lending industry was a, was a little bit, uh, in turmoil, if you will. And, uh, you know, obviously starting out in that space in that time, it might not have been, I guess, the easiest time to start in this industry. So how were you able to, I guess, jump in and, you know, survive, like you said, without really knowing what you were getting yourself into, uh, kind of in that time period? Well, when we got into it, it was still the rise of subprime. So we did really well the first few years. Um, but then when 2007, 2008 hit, um, that's when things started to really take a deep, a deep dive. And it, it, it did catch me by surprise. I was only 24 years old. Um, never been through a recession, had no idea what was going on. And, um, you know, we woke up one day and 40, 40 of our lenders shut down. Um, you know, so it was the craziest thing looking back. Um, but, um, we never took out any debt. Um, so we had, you know, we were financially disciplined. Um, and at that time we had a small team, so it didn't really, I'm not going to say that we're hundred percent immune. I mean, obviously our, our, our revenue went down substantially at that time, but we survived. Uh, and then we pivoted, you know, we pivoted to where the opportunity, where the market was, which at that time, you know, subprime died and then government lending like FHA, uh, was the new hottest thing. So we had to pivot to, you know, other products. Um, so that's how we, um, you know, survived is paying attention to what was going on in the market and where the opportunities were. And that's kind of what led us, you know, to where we are today. We've constantly added more product line, keep continuing to pivot. Like we've added in the last 10 years, uh, private and commercial lending. We didn't have commercial lending, uh, you know, 11 years ago now. You know, fast forward in the last 10 years, we have private because sometimes, and, and you may know this, that a lot of times real estate deals, they don't fit the box of a bank conventional requirement. And that's why you have private fix and flip hard money, you know, bridge loans, no doc loans, asset based where, OK, you know what? The deal doesn't make sense today for a bank or conventional, but later on it can make sense. Um, so we can give you a bridge loan, a private loan, which has more flexible underwriting requirements. And then later on, you can refinance, you know, to a long-term loan, um, or a bank loan once that property stabilized, once the credit's ready or whatever the problem is. Um, so we've added these other products now in addition to that. So that's the thing I think in any business that you have to, um, if you want to stay afloat is you have to pay attention to what's going on in the market. Um, and it's sad because a lot of businesses that were great, you know, they didn't do that. Like Radio Shack, I mean, Circuit City, I don't know if you remember Circuit City, there was a lot of good businesses. They didn't pivot. And uh, in time, uh, I, I was funny. I was going to the store there the day. I don't know if you remember Z Gallery. Um, it was a kind of a 
you know, home furnishing store and they used to have location. Well, I thought the location was still in city center. I went to there on Sunday and they shut down. So I went and researched it. The company filed bankruptcy. You know, they were, they sold home goods, but they couldn't make it. You know, Amazon, you know, online, they, they didn't pivot fast enough. Right. I mean, so, and it was a great store. I loved it. Um, but you know, it's one of those things you have to, if you're in a business and then obviously cash flow, cash flow is number one, cash flow is king. You have to have cash. Right. Yeah. So pivoting in, in business is, it's so important, right? Like you mentioned those stores that didn't, and you know, another example that comes up is Blockbuster, where right? we all kind of seen what happened to them. Um, so it, I think it's super interesting that you guys were able to kind of start out, you know, being very successful when subprime was, you know, on, on the up and up and everybody was, that was like the, the new cool thing. And, you know, all of a sudden just overnight it went away and it became this, you know, this terrible thing for the entire industry. And you guys are not only able to stay in business, but kind of use that as a, use that as a, a way to leverage your own advantage, which is now jumping into um, FHA loans and government loans at that point. Right. So right. I think that's very, uh, it's very interesting that you guys took that strategy and that's been, and that's been what you guys been doing ever since. Right. And then we've, yeah, then we've just kind of kept adding, you know, additional products since then. It was just whatever, you know, our thought is that if there's a market out there and it's a good market, we want to be in it. So we didn't have the thinking that, no, we just want to stay in our lane. You know, we want to be aware of what are, where's all the opportunity and let's add as much product and get really good at that product. Um, so that way we have a very robust offering. Right. And I'd love to kind of talk a little bit about that, if you don't mind, which is, you know, how are you guys able to do that? What kind of framework do you guys have in place in your business that really allows you to not only pivot, but to add new products or, you know, services, if you, if you will, to your business without overextending, without, you know, diluting down your previous core services, if that makes sense. Yeah. So we have, we have, we literally have their, their separate companies. I mean, so like separate legal entities with separate employees, separate management. Um, I mean, there's our, our main company, you know, Angelo Christian Financial. And then we have a residential to arm and then we have a private arm. Then we have a commercial arm and then there's management and each each division like a tree. And then there's, you know, um, loan officers, loan processors, underwriters, uh, marketing. Um, so they, they have to all be separated out because they, it's, it would get too convoluted um if it was all just under one or if now one thing i do think it's important we do have some people that are cross-trained um that have been with me a really long time like a few decades and they they're aware of all the product offering um and they have knowledge of it there are some like we call them super lenders um because they can do hard money they can do commercial and residential all at the same time but for somebody new in the business, that would be it would be way too much and extremely overwhelm, overwhelming. And um, so, yeah, we have, but it has to all be very organized. Uh, we talked about communication, organization. I mean, logistics, I mean, when you run a business are extremely critical. So, um, you know, we're, we're, we're probably, um, I mean, just me alone, I probably get about 2,000 emails a day, probably about 1,200 text messages a day. And, um, you know, so I have four email accounts to run my business. Um, so it's, 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 it's a lot of work, you know, you're constantly checking things, you know? So, um, but yeah, I mean, those are, those are the things that have helped us, you know? So, um, but yeah, I mean, the structure and organization has to be very, very well. Right. And I was going to say that you guys must have like your systems in place, um, really locked down because there is... Right the expansion phase is, is there's a lot of testing. There's a lot of trial and error. You're roaming into new territory. So you definitely have your systems down. Yeah. And, and just as on, so there's actually, yeah, for each, like, for example, residential lending has a completely different software than commercial lending. I mean, so they don't even, they don't even talk to each other. They're completely separate um, because the, the inputs are and the data is, is way different. Um, yeah, I know it's, it's a lot of work. I'm not going to kid you, but it's fun. It's worth it. We like it. Um, and we want, I mean, obviously we want to, you know, we want to excel and sustain. So, I mean, our thought process is, you know, do whatever it takes to make it happen. Wow. Yeah. And that's kind of been 
your success as far as being able to expand as quickly as you guys have? Because I, I you know, you see businesses out there all the time who are not doing that, right? Who right. stick to their core services, who stick to, you know, doing one thing really, really well. And, you know, they made a good name for themselves doing that. But what you guys have been doing is rapidly expanding, adding new products, adding new services so that you can really diversify and also really hedge against something, something happening like what happened back in 2007, 2008. Um, and uh, and right. continue surviving that way. Is that why you guys have been continuing to add new yeah. products? Yeah, that, I mean, just like look what happened with COVID. I mean, you know, when COVID hit, I mean, commercial lending died. So, you know, and, res and rates dropped so low, you could get a two, two and a half percent rate, residential lending blew up, you know? So um, you got, and you don't know what's going to happen. Well, no one saw, I didn't see COVID come. I don't think anyone could predict that. So, but I think being diversified, um, is you have somewhat of a hedge or a buffer, you know, and in case something does happen, I mean, I, I agree with mastering something and doing it very well. Cause what you don't want to have is where you see a lot of entrepreneurs, they get in like 20 different businesses chasing the shiny objects or butterflies. And they're not, none of them are really doing any revenue or making any money. That's not what you want to do either. Um, but if you started a core business and it's doing very well, um, and then you're adding, you know, um, synergistic, you know, complementary product lines to it, then I think that that's okay. Right. I mean, um, it's not like we got into lending and then we got into pharmaceuticals and added that to it, you know, so it's still all lending. It's just different divisions. Um, so, and I think that that, if it's, if it's managed properly, um, then I think it's, it works, right? It's kind of like Walmart at its Sam's club, you know? So it's like, you have, they're kind of this, they're still selling some type of product or grocery. Uh, it's just a different way of doing it. Um, so I think it's, if it's done right, um, it can be very well. Um, but I, I don't disagree with you that you have to master your, your core business for sure. Right. So I'd love to kind of get your take on this because, you know, you guys are obviously in multiple different you know, avenues when it comes to lending, but have you ever, I guess, analyzed an opportunity or pursued and, you know, looked into a different type of lending product or something possibly that's related and you noticed that it wasn't a good opportunity or you decided to wait a little bit before jumping into that product? Um, has that ever happened and kind of what went into that decision when you do decide to, I guess, not pursue an opportunity at this point uh, just because it might overextend you? Yeah, no, I mean, that, I mean, it happens all the time. I mean, there's, there's always been, I mean, there's, there's um, things that come up where um, all the time where it could be either be a new product offering um, or even a new, a new deal. Um, and, and that deal that we are looking at, um, it just doesn't make sense for us at that time either because it might be too, the capital requirements may be too high. Uh, for example, let's say you look at funding. A, let's say we're looking at, um, I know it's a specific deal, but it's a $54 million multifamily in Orlando ground of construction. Um, and we like the location. We love Orlando. But the borrower, the sponsor, only wanted to put in, you know, like 3% of his own equity. And uh, we didn't feel comfortable with that. Um, so we tabled it and said, look, you know, we, we like the project, but you know, you, we don't feel like you're putting enough money into it for us to make that size of a loan. Um, so that's on a deal transaction on, on products. Um, if we feel like, you know, that if because some of the products are credited on the secondary market with Wall Street and they may release a product, um, but that doesn't mean that we have to adopt it. And sometimes we'll table some things like there are certain programs that have come up, come out and um We'll look at it and say, no, we don't think that's that's good at this time to do, whether it's there's some programs that have come out recently uh, for people that don't have a social security. They just have a tax ID number, um, but they're offering very high leverage with only, you know, five percent down. And we didn't feel comfortable with that risk. We think they should be putting at least 10 percent down. Um, so you, we, you come into situations like that all the time. And, and the thought is that everything that we do is from a decision standpoint, it has to be to protect the company and risk mitigation. So that's the inputs of the thought that go into it is, is this going to protect the company? Is it going to help enhance the value of the company? Is it, what's the risk factors? If the risk factors are too high based on our, um, our inputs, our data, then we won't do it. 
you can't just be focusing on profit or money. You also have to be focused on contemplating the downside and the risk. Absolutely. And that's so important when it comes to protecting your company, right? Not just growing, growing, but also how do we stay in business for the right. long term? Right. Yeah. Right. So Angelo, I really appreciate you being here today. You shared yeah. I think, some value for us. And Thank I think you. you inspired a lot of our viewers and listeners as well, based on just your personal story. So uh, for anybody who is watching or listening to this that want to reach out to you, that want to learn more about what you're yeah. doing, or maybe they're a real estate agent that want to partner with you on deals in the future with their clients or investors, how can they reach you? What are the best yeah. ways to follow you? For sure, for sure. So we're a nationwide uh, commercial, residential, private lender. So we're here. We have offices in Houston, um, the Woodlands, Florida, Miami. But you can call or text our office, uh, 832 Four three one six three three, and we also have our uh, website officialangelochristian.com, and our social media. We're a bit huge on social media. I have a podcast there, uh, Real Estate Insider. Um, you can look us up on you know YouTube, Instagram, uh, Angelo Christian. Uh, I think we have over sixteen hundred videos that we've released on there. We've been doing it for over seven years on our social media, so you can reach us out there. So yeah. Please reach out to us so we can help you. You want you need help with a deal, financing, whatever for real estate. We want to be your lender. Awesome. We'll make sure to leave the links down to that in the description and the show notes below. But other than that, Angelo, appreciate you being here. Yeah, before so we let you go, is there any last tips, any last piece of advice you want to leave with us? Uh, just, you know, I would say in life, make the most of yourself and, um, you know, do all that you can. Um, you know, whatever you decide to do with your life, um, just be the best that you can be and, uh, just make the most of yourself and add as much value that you can while you're here on earth. Awesome, man. Appreciate you. Appreciate you for yeah. tuning in and we'll see you on the next show. Take Thank care. Thank you, Kobe. Thank you, man.